Hi, I'm Mark Vernarelli, and welcome to Inside Harford County, a program where we sit down with our community leaders and discuss the issues important to the citizens of Harford County. On July the 1st, Dr. Sean Bolson became superintendent of Harford County Public Schools, and now he's addressing immediate needs, and he's ready also to begin planning for the future. Dr. Bolson has uh, had a very busy first four months, to say the least, and we're very happy to welcome him here today, sir. Thank you very much for being here. It's a pleasure to have you. Welcome back to Maryland. We'll get more into why we say back to Maryland in a minute, but welcome to Harford County. It's great to have you. Thank you. Very happy to be here. Tell us a little bit about your background. You've been in education a long time and you have quite an interesting background. Uh, I started at Albert Einstein High School in Kensington, Maryland uh, in 1995. Taught English as a second language, worked my way through the district, ended up at Bethesda Chevy Chase High School where I was principal, and later worked in central office in Montgomery County before going to be superintendent in Wilson, North Carolina. Spent two years at the University of North Carolina uh, working on starting up some laboratory schools there and, and then that was my last position before returning to Maryland. So you've gone, uh, this is your second stint in Maryland mm -hmm. and Montgomery County is kind of all on its own. It's a county unlike oh, yeah. any other yeah. but you had uh, 20 some high schools down there. You have nine up here. I guess 50, about 54 schools here and the population here is much smaller than Montgomery County, but much bigger than it was in Wilson, North Carolina. So you're kind of in the middle now, right? I, I, Harford County is a great fit for me personally and professionally. Uh, I'm very happy to be back in Maryland. And Harford's more of a small town like I experienced in North Carolina, but the Maryland issues, and I think in just in many ways, the, the quality and the forward-thinking nature of education in Maryland that I experienced in Montgomery County is very much present here in Harford. You've spent a lot of time in these first four months of what you're calling the Listen and Learn Tour, and you actually had it all spelled out of whom you were going to speak to and, and what the timetable was. And now, just really just a few days ago, you have concluded all of this. And what is your, first of all, your 30-second conclusion over what you've learned, and then we'll get back into some of the specifics. Overall, what have, what have you learned from the folks you Simplest have? answer, we have a lot of talent here. Uh, I think we haven't drawn on the talent within this community to help solve problems. And so building on our strengths, which are our relationships and our partnerships, I think would be the, at least my strate strategic approach to moving forward with the district. And I, I think you know, we can get what we need to get done on behalf of kids. You don't have a lot of growth here, which is right. a good thing. You don't right. need additional high schools. You, I guess you'll focus on what we have, mm -hmm. the nine that we have. but. You do have uh, probably you've probably heard of some things that people consider to be problems. What did the parents, the teachers, the staff identify to you as things that needed to be worked on? A few. I mean, there's always discussion about budget, but you know that is sort of that underlies everything because what do you want to achieve with what you have? Uh, I think we need a greater focus on career. Uh, how we prepare students for careers in addition to the work we're doing for college, but at the same time we need to make sure we're preparing them really well. Uh, and so I've heard a great deal about that in the community. Um, a number of issues, people always have questions about safety. We've done some work in that area. Um, we also have, I mean, a couple things, priorities I've set. I want to see us start focusing on reading right away. Uh, we saw a little bit of dip in scores there, but I just, from talking to principals and learning a little bit about that work, uh, that's one of the key areas uh, instructionally that we'll be focusing, and you'll see that uh, kindergarten through 12th grade. There's some discussion of perhaps we're foisting college on people too much, and maybe not everybody's set out to go to college, and you made an interesting comment there about getting kids ready for whatever the next mm -hmm. phase in their life is. You have an interesting background in that you worked in the school system, public school system, and also in the college, the university mm -hmm. system, and building those partnerships. Do you see uh, working some partnerships into the future here with trade schools, with technical schools, with colleges to help the high school kids come through here? Well, that uh, probably my greatest takeaway from the time I spent in the university system was the reality that we could do so much more together. Uh, I mean, recognizing that the partnerships I had as a superintendent prior to working at the university, I wasn't tapping into the talents of the universities that were around me nearly as much as I could. At the same time, there's a lot the universities need from us. So there's, there's plenty of room for growth and strengthening those relationships so that we can help each other do our work better. 
uh, that's that's critical and that will be a part of how I see us moving forward uh, it's just a matter one of the challenges with Harford County is we don't have any four-year institutions that are based here uh, we have partners who come we have you know Towson has their their facility here and others are invested on in us in different ways but um, but of course we also have the tremendous resource in, in the community college absolutely really Harford Community College has done a tremendous job in partnering with many in the community back to your listen and learn tour what did you hear mostly from the parents and if students participated from them what did they talk about most as you made your rounds well parents their first concern is always for the needs of their children in their schools and they're as diverse as the parents we have here I mean their interests their needs um, you know I always started the conversations either in the big public meetings where we had groups of people taking notes and doing that sort of things or even in my individual conversations we always started with what we celebrate and undoubtedly I would hear great people great relationships and so we always heard that pretty much regardless of where I started the conversation um, individuals had challenges and had frustrations and so our work will be to continue to address those as best we can um, but in terms of the needs for kids in the schools very long list <laughs> <There's>, I mean <laughs> that's it but, but everyone is very tuned in to what their what their children are experiencing and how they think we could do it better because there's always room for improvement and you found that people are very interested it's it's, it's a county that it, by and large people really no are invested in their schools no doubt I you know board meetings it's been pretty common to have seven to ten or eleven people coming out just for public comment uh, every board meeting and it's important to hear that it's important to keep having those voices uh, it's you know it's great to have a meeting we had nearly 500 people at my at my findings presentation Monday night and you know maybe graduation and sporting events will bring that many people out but not many not often will you see that many people show up just to talk about you know the real meat of the work in education and so it was great to know people were were that interested you've been around a long time 24 25 years in, in uh, education so this is a difficult question but you've been in Wilson County North Carolina where the biggest city is 50,000 people but the rest of the county is very mm -hmm. rural you've been in Montgomery County which is extremely diverse and very large with a huge number of schools and now you're here what have you learned that you think you can use here in those two other places what did you learn that you think will come in most handy up here oh again a very long list but I mean you've heard me say it already I mean my my, my strategy isn't a secret to tap the talent that's there um, you know I think throughout my career tapping into those resources that are available of the, of the people who will want to contribute it's about being open to those contributions and figuring out how to solve problems together uh, I think a strategy that I always employ is that the best solutions come from those closest to what you're trying to address and we just I mean that's just my approach I go back to it it's not uh, it's not magic uh, but I, I found and again the interest and being engaged and helping do the work is very present here and so we'll just keep working on that one of the interesting things in your background I think is the English as a second language mm -hmm. or uh, for kids mm -hmm. who maybe were not primarily English speakers or who come from families who are not primarily English speakers you don't see those numbers up here certainly as you did in Montgomery County but you still have a, a need to focus on that up here correct there it's a small but growing growing slowly but it's a small but growing population here and you know our world in general is becoming more global I mean it's a it's a pretty small neighborhood we all live in because you can connect to anybody at any time and so you know having my roots from the classroom be in English as a second language where I had this perspective of kids coming to me from all over the world you get a sense that you really need to value others perspectives but that also again that's the underpinning of my need for focusing on relationships and making sure you're talking to people because those perspectives matter their realities are different and uh, so how we do that I mean that's a very real need here in the county there you know one of the things I heard concerns about is that not all of our kids here feel that their culture is valued uh, and so we need to keep working on how we do that and you know my experiences in ESL are one of the things that contribute to how I think we'll focus on that but it, you know making sure everyone has a voice Another thing that's a huge issue today, unfortunately, is school safety. And we've seen incidents uh, that have just, uh, you know, rattled us to our core. Mm -hmm. And I know you've signed up for and endorsed a program called ACERT, mm -hmm. which I'll let you say what that stands for, because I know I'll mess that <laughs> up. It's a long one. But uh, we do have a very strong focus on school safety as well, correct? Yeah, so that's our active assailant critical response training. And that's a collaboration 
with the sheriff's department, all of the, the police jurisdictions of our, of our local entities, and then of course the, the county government, the county executive. And the idea is how schools or how anyone responds to some of these terrible incidents that we've seen happen around the world. The, the response is that the science around that is evolving. And so we're modifying our training, we're modifying our plans, and we're going to spend this year, we uh, will be training our school-based administrators next week um, but we'll spend the rest of the year uh, preparing our teachers and ultimately our students uh, on how to think differently during crisis situations. And this is something that isn't done overnight. This takes uh, several months at least, I would think, to implement, correct? Everything in a district this size takes time. Yeah. We have a lot of people. I mean, nearly 38,000 students, uh, approximately 5,000 employees, to get everyone trained and being thinking, uh, to be able to think about these things, partly because you know, our work during the day, there's not a lot of time for training worked into even to our annual schedule. And so first setting this as a priority and then mapping out how we're going to get to everybody and how we're going to deliver that. Uh, but like everything else, it's going to be a solution that comes from, you know, all of our, you know, I think our teachers are going to have a big contribution to how we do this. Uh, so we'll get it there. What was your thought as you traveled around the county? I would imagine you probably haven't spent a lot of time up here until now. And you, you know, North Hartford is totally different from Joppa Town, which is totally different from Bel Air, which is totally different from Haverty Grace. They're all different areas. Uh, were you impressed with the, the, uh, the rural, urban, kind of the mixture of, of things uh, This is that you're a beautiful county. It is. Absolutely beautiful county. And but the thing is, that I, absolutely drawn to the diversity mm -hmm. of it, you know, the, you know, the different types of communities. that um, There's so much that's appealing about it. And so it's it's been great. I mean, to to be able to you know drive three miles this way and be out in the country, and then go this way and be in downtown and have have the benefits that that brings. So it's um, it's really a neat place. What are you most excited about? I I I see education professionals such as you being always upbeat and always anxious. <laughs> and I'm sure in your in your dark moments in your office, sometimes you probably have uh, issues that you deal with. But you seem very excited about being here. What is the one thing that you want to impact right away? And I know you just said there's a whole laundry list of stuff. But what's the one thing that you really really want to focus on? If you, if you could focus on one thing. Let me come with the upbeat answer, <laughs> because I, I think in the end, and I, and I said this first actually in my public interview when I came and got to meet everybody <laughs> that first day, is I want this community to be able to recognize that education is such, the value that education brings to the community. I, I want the school system here to be adding even greater value to the community at large and I want the community to recognize those contributions of the school system, if that makes sense. The school system is one part of a complex system that is a community. And we have a really important job to take care of the kids, to prepare the workforce, to be welcoming to outsiders to come and want to be here. I mean, all of those things are things that we can contribute. Uh, and we do that by creating just a great place for people to work and attend school. And I guess it's important to point out again that you have been a superintendent before. This is not your first mm -hmm. time as a superintendent. Mm -hmm. In Wilson County, you were a superintendent the first time. And uh, what did you learn as a young superintendent? You were fairly young in those days when you got that promotion. And what did you learn that you think you has stuck with you and you will never forget a lesson that you learned or what think you think has made you a, a better superintendent through the years? I think I've learned how important it is to get to know the people in town who have been doing this and living this and contributing for so long and to really learn what's there and what I have to work with. And I did a little of that going in the first time as superintendent in North Carolina, but as you saw, I mean, the, the entry plan, that was, that was deliberate. I mean, I don't think um, I'm going to be able to have a greater impact sooner because I took this time uh, to, to learn about the folks who are here really doing the work and contributing and all the great thinking that's gone on prior to my arrival. During your listen and learn tour, so to speak, it sounds mm -hmm. like a rock rock and roll show tour, but during <laughs> your listen and learn tour, did you hear mostly the same things in different geographical areas or were, were there specific things specific to a region, just out of curiosity? Oh, no, of course, they were different everywhere. Like I said, the, the thing that I heard consistently was the, the relationships and the people. But then the issues are different everywhere. Um, what 
families see is their goals for the kids are slightly different whether in some places it's really focusing on that college education in other places we need to we need a better focus on careers and we need to create opportunities that that match the interests of the of the students and families there uh, so we need to we need to balance that we need to weigh that and I think the the diversity in this county with regard to the types of schools and, and the, the the communities that we serve is what makes it so interesting, but also what makes it kind of complicated too, because we have to figure out how to weigh those varying interests and have it turn into something where everyone feels served and is part of the solution. Infrastructure-wise, we've discussed on this program in years past uh, the need for certain schools to be modernized or, mm -hmm. or rebuilt. But you were saying earlier that the numbers-wise, the population is about is about flat. There's mm -hmm. no tremendous mm -hmm. growth expected in the immediate future, but that doesn't mean you. you don't have to keep up with what you have. What do you see from an infrastructure standpoint as you go around the county and, uh, and see a handful of schools that need work, more than a handful? Uh, how do they look to you? Well, generally? unfortunately, growth is never consistent. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we have areas in town that have grown faster than others. So we have some schools that are overcrowded, some schools that are under capacity. Um, that's not an easy solution because you can't just ship kids out to somewhere because that's not efficient. They lose a lot of time in transit, so we have to figure out. So even though we don't, you know, we have capacity for the kids we're serving, we have capacity for more to possibly move in and attend our schools, but they may not be in the places where people are moving. So we need to continue to be doing work on the capital. Again, it's not so much building new schools as it is doing a, doing a really good job keeping up with our schools. I mean, our maintenance team works very hard and they have done a tremendous job in the in the the, um, the shape that these schools are in for some of the age that's on them is is really commendable and I've been impressed with that um, but at the same time I spent the entire summer I got daily updates about which HVAC systems were up and which ones were down and where people were running out to make sure we could get air conditioning going so when we open school because you know, being able to open school because you had working air conditioning wasn't a guarantee this year. Mm -hmm. We saw that occur in other places. Folks had to work very hard because some of these systems are much older. And that's just one example, right, of, of the sure. ways that um, that side can, can affect everything you're doing. And so my team on that front, they're very good. They're stretched pretty thin. Mm -hmm. So uh, for us, it's more about renovation and maintenance and those sorts of, uh, you know, keeping up in those areas and not so much needing to build new schools um, but you know that's going to be a constant challenge how, how we maintain those things particularly again considering the growth is different in different parts of the community. Let's go back to Montgomery County for a moment you spent yeah. quite a bit of time down there uh, it's it's completely different atmosphere down there just because it's so much bigger and so so very mm -hmm. diverse what did you learn down there even a hard lesson that maybe has stayed with you that you can apply up here even though it's a totally different type of system is there something down there that you will draw upon you think or you've already drawn upon in your early days here in oh, there are lessons every day yeah. I mean my entire training I spent 16 years there and worked I think I had nine different jobs or something. <laughs> it was it was a lot of different jobs over 16 years and got to see so much at the end, though, it doesn't matter whether you're in Joppa Town or Rockville. Kids, in many ways, kids are still kids. You could walk into either place and you could meet the kids and you wouldn't know where they were from. I mean, their, their, their hopes and dreams are similar, um, may vary, but only so much as they do across any group. Um, I did learn that, you know, parents want to see their kids be successful. Educators want to see their kids be successful. We all have varying opinions about how to get there. Um, but it's nice to always be able to start from that common ground of we want what's best for kids. We just got to come to some agreement on how we get there. Sure. What about standardized testing? Do you have any thoughts or opinions that you'd like to share? Because <laughs> I know many people have thought strong opinions about standardized testing and, and the, the reliability of that in terms of predicting success. Uh, what are your general thoughts on that? You know, every topic we touched on and listen and learn wasn't should we do this, yes or no. It was are we doing the right amount? And I would argue that we've, our needle shifted a little too far toward the testing side that we need, you know, you need to have a really good balance between accountability and instruction. Uh, because the time you're spending doing the testing is time you're not delivering instruction. And so I think we need to continue getting on to that balance. And I think accountability needs to continue to evolve so that the feedback loop, what we learn from testing is affecting what's going on in the classroom quicker. 
because right now these big statewide tests they you know they happen once we get the results later you don't really get to do anything with it till the next school year and so I'd like to see an evolution occur there but we can never lose sight of the importance of knowing how everyone's doing and knowing at such a level that we can make sure we're keeping pace with other places which means there has to be some consistency sure. so we have, we to, have to have the, things to know yeah, how we have to have doing. the standardized part of this but I think there's room for it to continue to evolve go back to the assert training for a moment if you sure, don't mind the absolutely. active shooter training if I can call it that uh, give us I know you can't get into it specifically that would take a whole half hour show to ju just do that but what are some of the the, the bullet points of that training uh, is it is it similar to the other we've heard of the Alice training and these other trainings that other school systems are using absolutely how does this differ um, so they're all built on basically the national run hide fight model mm -hmm. options based response to critical uh, critical incidents mm -hmm. And so the trainers that we're using, in fact, all of the trainers we have, have been Alice trained. Um, but we also have people who have looked at the other run, hide, fight models that have evolved across the country. So for us, we're, we're drawing on all of those. Um, and they're based in really the same area, the options-based approach. And so that's what we're looking at. And again, working with law enforcement officials to customize it, to make it just right for our school district. For me, it's important that it remains dynamic, that we learn, we train, we, we kind of raise people's awareness of all of these issues, but we don't get ourselves caught into one model that three years down the road, we gotta change again. I mean, keeping up with safety, unfortunately, is, has to be an ongoing thing now. And we need to create a system that allows us to continue to evolve as the best practices in the industry evolve. Did you hear a lot of talk about safety from parents and students or not so much when you I, came here? You always hear it. I mean, you can't be successful in schools if you're not dealing with safety first. Then you can get around to instruction. Uh, and I think the other critical message, because again, we always talked about budget, the other one is we're the biggest spender of taxpayer dollars. And so we need to make sure that we're being responsible, transparent, efficient. And I think a lot of us don't realize we are the eighth or ninth largest school district in Maryland out of the 24 mm -hmm. jurisdictions. It's not a small system mm -hmm. by any means. And we're probably in the top 200 nationally. I mean, most school districts in this country are not this big. And, um, but Harford County is still kind of a small town. And that's it's one of the nice things about it. 54 schools, I believe it's 54, 54 schools mm -hmm. is a lot of schools to mm -hmm. manage. And it's, mm -hmm. it's twice as many approximately as you had in Wilson County. And, mm -hmm. uh, and not nearly as many as you had uh, in Montgomery County, right. but of course you weren't the superintendent right. down there. I was, my last job there was community superintendent. I was responsible for 35 schools, so mm. actually fewer than here, about 25,000 students there. Um, so I was approaching the scale in the work I was doing there, uh, but, but this is a little different. Go back to that partnership thing. You worked for the university system in North Carolina mm -hmm. for several years. What was your main goal there? What were you trying to do with the partnership? So I was originally hired at UNC to open laboratory schools. The legislators down there had actually included in their budget bill a requirement for UNC to, across the UNC system to open eight laboratory schools. And these were schools that were meant to be independent schools run by the university in communities with uh, a concentration of low performing schools so they were designed to work with kids who had great needs and so I was working for about two years getting new schools opened on a really rapid schedule um, but in that I was learning a lot about school choice I was learning a lot about starting up schools about addressing the needs of students from low performing settings and so but but it was again merging the interests of the colleges of ed the local school districts the legislators, I mean, it was bringing all these players together to create something that, that could succeed on behalf of kids. And in many ways, that's kind of what we do every day here. It's interesting. Would you foresee that concept potentially coming here? I know you just said it's a totally different uh, uh, landscape here because we don't have any four-year institutions mm -hmm. in the county. But do you foresee that concept well, working here? Lessons learned from that. I, I, I certainly couldn't take that model. I mean, that model right. was very custom designed <laughs> right. for, for that circumstance. Uh, but certainly there are lessons learned from that type of work that could be applied here. You said that kids are kids no matter where you go, and that's absolutely that. true. Yep. What, what, what drew you to education in the first place? Why do you like to, why'd you like to hang around kids and teach kids when you were a younger man? Well, I, my story is not a lot different. My, my mom retired she, uh, as a principal. She was a teacher my entire life, and I was the son who, you know, when I came home from college, I'd go visit her class for a day. And, and so 
it came from that, and I think a lot of educators would give you a similar story. You get a, a great thrill out of seeing people succeed and, and seeing the numbers go mm -hmm. up. You talk about mm -hmm. standardized testing, love them or hate them, you have to have a measurement, mm -hmm. and when, that's how you measure your performance, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you're thrilled when you see numbers go up, and, and how the kind of success you had in North Carolina was, was part of that, too, I guess. Yeah, and I, we're going we're gonna to work that out here as well. I mean, these kids are going to be successful, and we need to, but part of the importance of the listen and learn was to understand what success means in this environment, in this community. What do people consider success? And that's something that we're going to continue talking about so that when we achieve, we're achieving on behalf of the people here. The Listen and Learn Rock show's over, but, <laughs> but if people are out there and they want to talk to you or your folks, how do they get in touch with you? What's the best way to do that if they have a suggestion or concern that good Well, the easiest thing is to point people toward our website. Mm -hmm. uh, we're at hcps.org. Um, and so, but, you know, I have a lot of great people who can help. Uh, so if you're in a community, I mean, always go in and talk to people at your school. Uh, they're in the front lines. You probably need a break right now, but I'm sure down the road you'll be doing more going out into the schools and, and going to meetings and, and organizing mm -hmm. things. But for now, you just have to get the lay of the land, right? Yeah, the official Listen to Learn tour is over, but that's the work. That's how I do the work. So that'll be ongoing. Did anything really shock you from that? Anything really good comes... Mm -hmm. You, you probably have heard it all before, not to Nothing shocking. It. Yeah, nothing shocking. Did anything really good come from it? I mean, I was just encouraged every day at the quality of the talent I was encountering as I went out and talked to people in our schools. So you're overall very happy to be here and looking no doubt. forward to having an impact. Yeah, absolutely. And what's your word to the parents out there who, who feel like uh, they're always concerned about their kids? You're going to take good care of the children, I'm sure, to the extent that you can. We are going to take good care of them. But if we're not, we need to know about it. Um, let your schools know, let us know. Um, that has to be a dialogue and they have to be our partners. It's a pleasure to have you here, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, glad I could I get be here. the feeling the bow tie is a permanent fixture. Is that right? You're you a bow know, tie well, guy? I wasn't 100% a bow tie guy before, but it seems to have become uh, yeah, what people from expect. From what I've and, seen, I've seen it a lot. Yeah, yeah. I, I like the bow ties, and so I think you'll continue to see those. Very nice to meet you, thank sir. You. Thank you so much. And thank you very much for watching Inside Harford County, airing exclusively on Harford Cable Network. We will be repeating this program throughout the month of November on Mondays at 2 and Thursdays at 7 in the evening. And please join us again for another issue important to Harford County on the next Inside Harford County. Thanks for watching.